When you say that we should focus on what through me rather than what for me, does that emptying of myself mean I should have no thoughts and just let things flow the way they are? That perhaps whatever needs to happen will happen? Or should I act? Are we supposed to engage in calculated steps? Or is it all just the call of the heart? So one of the concepts that we speak about frequently is Puja Swamiji's emphasis on what through me rather than what for me as a way to live. If you've been to satsang for more than, more than a few nights, chances are you've heard some variation of that. That as we live, in order to not just clean our karma, not just attain punya or merits, not just for those, but even for the peace and the joy and the fulfillment and the meaning every moment, every day. It's not just about, you know, is it heaven or is it hell after you die or what's going to happen in next birth, but rather right here, right now, how to live in moksha, in freedom, in joy, in peace, rather than in tension and stress and difficulty. So the what through me rather than what for me is a key. A, of course, it's better for the world. It's better for using whatever talent, skills, abilities, intelligence, initiative we have in service. But it's, it's more than just that. When we say what through me, really what's happening is we are putting ourselves in alignment with the flow of the universe. There's, there's a flow in the universe, much like there's a flow in the river Ganga. And the concept of what through me, when we ask ourselves what through me, it's literally putting us in alignment with that flow of the earth, with that flow of creation, with that flow of nature, divine nature, the will of God, whatever, whatever term we use for it. So it's something we speak about a lot. So now the question says, well, okay, if what we're asking is not what for me, so we're not moving through the world based on my desires, my ego, but rather we're asking what through me. Does that mean that I don't act? Does it mean that I don't think? Does it mean that I don't plan? Does it mean that I don't make decisions? Do I just assume that what's supposed to happen will happen? And the answer to that is no. And the reason is, we are acting anyway. Even if I say, okay, I'm going to just let the universe flow through me. Well, that's also an action. Neither, neither of the options is non-action. Neither of the options is not making decisions. Neither of the options is just sit here and wait and see. Neither of the options says status quo is best. Both of them are actions. The only difference is the what for me is really in service of our, our lowercase s self, 
We spoke a lot about this the other night, the distinction between that. The lowercase s self being our ego, our false identities, our fears, our desires, all of that how we've, how we've always lived, all of that which comes easy, all of that which feels familiar. That's, that's the lowercase s self. This is how I've always done it. This is what I'm, what I'm afraid of. This is what I love. This is my ego. This is who I am. That's lowercase s self. And when I make choices about, well, what am I going to get out of it? Where is me in this? If the me that I'm asking about is the lowercase s self, so, all right, I'm going to do that for you. What are you going to do for me? All right, that's lowercase s self. Capital S self gets by giving. The capital S self, our, our true self, our expanded self, understands that when I'm doing something for you, I'm doing it for me. Understands the oneness between us. And in that giving is also receiving. So when we ask what through me, it really is calling upon us all to act from that higher self. And it's not always easy because a lot of times it shakes up, whether it's our inner world or whether it's our outer world. It shakes up our inner egos, our inner fears, our inner habits. A lot of times it calls upon us to make decisions that are not necessarily what the culture says. When I, when I first came to India and I knew this is where I was meant to be, I knew this is what I was meant to do, it just, it was so right. And Pooja Swamiji sent me back to America, briefly, thankfully, but he sent me back. And when I was there finishing the next semester, the next part of my studies, everybody I would speak to would say, well, you can't go back to India yet. You're too young. First, you've got to do X, Y, and Z. First, finish this. First, get yourself set. First, do this. First, do that. Then, you know, you want to take a year or two and go somewhere and do some social work? Sure, why not? But not now. The time isn't right. And yet I knew. I knew the time was right. Simply because I had such faith in God that I knew if the time wasn't right now, I wouldn't have had this experience now. But God is perfect. God can do whatever he wants. If I, if I wasn't supposed to be in India now, and rather I was supposed to, you know, continue to sit in those classes now and continue to live in that world now, well, God wouldn't have given me this experience yet. He certainly wouldn't have given it just to dangle it in front of my face. And so when we... When we're on that, that cusp or when we're at a fork in the road or when we're at a point where we're looking at our lives, neither of them, neither saying what for me nor what through me, is served by doing nothing. What for me? Of course, well, I've got to go out and grab and, you know, do whatever I need to do for my own ego. I've got to, you know, make sure you give me my due. I've got to make sure I have enough, earn enough, get enough, do enough. All the things that the ego worries about. I've got to make sure that my fears don't manifest, that that what, which worries me doesn't come to pass. There's a lot of work to be done. The ego doesn't let you just sit and wait. But 
Conversely as well, when we're talking about what threw me, it also isn't, well, I'll just sit here and when God wants me, well, he knows where to find me. It's not about that. It's about how can I make a decision that is to allow the universe to flow through me, to allow myself to be in alignment with that river, with that flow. And that also is action. It's just acting rather than in service of the, the small self, rather than in service of what am I going to earn, what am I going to gain, my house, my car, my family, my bank account, my this, my that, my fears, my expectations. Or even, even my small world, my children, my spouse, my parents, my house, my relations, my people, my community, rather than that. It's an expansion into how can I really be in this river of life that flows and flows and flows and gives and gives and gives and nourishes and nourishes and nourishes. How can I be part of that? And it's not always, it's not always big. Doesn't always mean you're going to go out and, you know, form an NGO or become the president of a country or, you know, do something on that level. It's all about the parts and the pieces. There's a beautiful, a beautiful story in the Ramayana when Lord Ram and all of his, his army are, are building the bridge to Lanka where they're going to rescue, rescue Sitama from Ravan. And he sees, he sees these squirrels that are rolling in the sand and bathing in the water and rolling in the sand and bathing in the water. And he says, what are you, what are you doing? You know, we're, we're building a bridge here. We've got a, a war to fight, you know. Sita Ma has been abducted. And, and the squirrel says, we're so sorry, you know, we're so little, we're so weak. There's not anything really that we can do to help you build this bridge. We can't carry boulders. We can't do anything of any great import. We're not going to be very good in the army of fighting the war. We can't rescue Sita Ma. But... But what we realized we can do is if we get ourselves wet and then we roll in the sand and then we go and bathe again right where the bridge is being built, slowly, 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 we can move a bunch of the sand from this beach into your bridge. So, okay, it may not be as much as the big boulders. It may not be as much as the big animals can carry. But at least in this way, we too we too can be part of building the bridge. And the story, the story says that Lord Ram was so pleased, so pleased with the devotion of the squirrels, even though in the grand scheme of things, one could certainly say they didn't make such a, such a huge impact in the bridge, that he was so pleased that he, he put his hand on the back of the squirrel to stroke it and bless it. And it's said that actually that's where the stripes on the squirrel come from. That they come from the hand of Lord Ram blessing, blessing the squirrel. And so it's a beautiful teaching of playing our role. Asking what threw me. Not everyone, not everyone was going to be able to carry the big boulders. Not everyone was going to be able to traverse the bridge and rescue. But the role, the role of everyone, even the squirrels, was so important and so 
deeply, deeply appreciated by Lord Ram, the, you know, the incarnation of the divine in form, that it's there to teach us, don't worry what you can do. Don't worry if you're a boulder carrier, if you're a big brick layer, if you're, you know, the one who's the hero of the war. Don't worry. Figure out what part you can play. And even if it's just getting wet and carrying the sand, so be it. But allow, allow that, that flow to flow through you. So circling back, when we have these decisions to make, they're not always easy. And asking what through me shakes up, shakes up the inner world, sometimes shakes up the outer world. Because everybody is used to everyone acting as what for me. So the minute that we make a different decision, it shakes people. It shakes them in their relationship to us. It shakes them in their relationship to themselves. Because everything we do becomes then a mirror for other people. If people are making decisions in their life according to their egos, according to their fears, according to their desires, according to the false identity, according to what they've always been told and they've never questioned it, and they've never, according to that, and you suddenly make a different decision, that's a mirror in the face of those who are, you know, sacrificing everything at the altar of the status quo. And a lot of times that's very threatening for people because a lot of people don't want to look at their own life decisions. And so this is where it requires sometimes some internal courage. But we remember, of course, that courage comes from the root, the same as the French word cœur, which means heart. So courage is not, I'm going to push you out of the way, or I'm going to hurt you to make my decision. I'm going to hurt you to carve my path. But rather, it means I'm going to do it with an open heart, an open heart of love and compassion for the world, but also an awareness that I, not so much lowercase s self, but my capital S self, I'm also part of that same world. And so the same love and compassion and care and service that I'm looking to give the world, I also have to extend to myself. <laughs>